everyone! School is finally out, at least for most of us, so it's time to take that well-deserved break. But I know you guys are very academically inclined, so now is also a really good time to create a study plan for the SAT if you've been procrastinating on it or if you haven't had time to study yet. Having a plan like this can help you achieve your goals and hold yourself accountable. So it's a really great thing to do even if you don't stick to it and have to adjust it a little bit. So let's talk about how you can prep for that August SAT while still balancing your life, your hobbies, work, or any other commitments you have. If you want a simple version of going about all this, today's sponsor Aisley is a great resource to check out. They use AI to help you prepare for your SAT, whether that's in creating a tailored study plan for for you based on when your test date is and what your goal score is, or offering extensive help with any problem you might have. They give you short, digestible diagnostic tests that are only 20 minutes, which can really speed up knowing where your weakest areas are without having to take full two-hour exams. What I love about it is you can ask it a question about any problem and it'll give you an answer tailored to the SAT. You can also ask it how to solve a problem in multiple ways, step by step, and then pick out the one that's easiest for you to learn with. Everyone learns differently and sometimes other sources don't necessarily walk through every single method you could use to solve a problem, but Aisley will. The most important way to improve on the SAT, in my opinion, is by reviewing your mistakes, and Aisley offers a very comprehensive and dynamic way to do that. By asking questions, you have to stay engaged, but you still have that crutch that you need when you're first learning concepts, which is sometimes hard to get when you're just reviewing on your own. Aisley also compiles all your mistakes for you so you can easily review them. The best part is that Aisley is completely tailored to you, so you can study smarter, not harder. That means you could be saving hours of time that you could potentially be using to do bigger, better things with your life. Their service is much more affordable than a private tutor, but still gives you that motivation and extra assistance that helps you do the best you can do and reach your goal score. It was designed by Stanford grads and takes every single digital SAT content from College Board that's created so far into account, so it's very up to date. If you're interested, you can check out the link in my description below for $10 off your first month. Thanks, Aisley. Okay, so in creating your plan, it's important to know what score you're ideally aiming for. Aiming for a 1600 is great and it'll never hurt you to have one, but it's overkill in a lot of cases. It's important to make this goal high, but also at least somewhat achievable so you don't get discouraged when you're practicing. I'd recommend taking a look at the common data sets for some of your top schools that you want to try to get into and seeing what the 75th percentile for those schools are and then aiming for somewhere around there if you want to be a competitive applicant for those schools. You can find these online by searching CDS with your school name or common data set with your school name. So once you set your goal, it's good to do a diagnostic as soon as possible if you don't know where you're currently scoring. I'd recommend taking a full blue book practice test under real conditions, so timing yourself, no distractions, go straight through to see where you're scoring right now. Once you have these results, you can see how much or how little you have to improve to get to your goal. And you'll also have information on exactly which categories are your strongest and your weakest both in terms of the math and reading section and in terms of the subcategories. Be sure to take your time and go through each of the mistakes you've made and write down the key words relating to the questions you most commonly get wrong, which you can find within the answer explanation PDFs on College Board's website. The next step is to determine how you learn best. Do you prefer sprint sessions where you're locked in for four or five hours straight one evening and review a full test and correct all your mistakes? Or would you rather focus for 10 minutes a day doing a few Aisley or Khan Academy problems and do that plan for a longer span of time. Don't force yourself into a plan that's not really working for you. You can always change it if you realize you're better at doing more focused prep every couple days or once a week rather than doing a little bit every day. Personally, my learning style is that I tend to get really excited about something for a little while and then dedicate like an entire day to it and then forget about it for the next couple weeks until I get excited about it again. That totally works for me, but that could be a nightmare scenario for someone else. So anyway, once you figure out kind of what you want to do preparation wise, you want to actually write down a schedule for yourself, like with a pen and paper. In my opinion, to be as prepared as you possibly can be for the SAT, I would recommend studying at least 50 hours. 50 hours of like dedicated SAT prep if you want to reach your goal score. I think anything more than that can get a little bit excessive and definitely gives you diminishing returns when you could just be focused on reading more over the summer or doing that summer work for an AP class that'll probably teach you how to read graphs anyway. A lot of the work you're going to be doing for your academics will also help you on the SAT. So there are other ways in which you can study that can benefit you on the SAT as well. So don't dedicate too much time to the SAT unless you really feel like you need it or you can see yourself kind of grasping the concepts but just need a little more time put in. On the opposite end of that, 50 hours might be really 
excessive if you're not starting from zero. I know people who have scored in the very high 1500s with only like a week of prep. It's definitely doable depending on the foundation you already have and if you have any background in subjects that are covered on the SAT. But I would say 50 hours is a good realistic number that you can aim for if you don't know how much time you really want to put into this but want to have the best shot you can at reaching your goal score. So now divide up this 50 hour number or whatever a number you ended up choosing into study sessions based on how long each day you want to study or each week you want to study. Keep in mind that if you're studying for 10 minutes a day that's going to take you about 300 days to prepare but having 10 five hour sessions strewn into your summer can be just as effective if that's how you learn best. Plan out when this prep is going to happen and mark those days on your calendar or your planner or your phone. Just make sure you get a reminder about them in some way. It's totally okay if you don't end up following the schedule at all but this will help hold you accountable and remind your future self that you did set that goal. You did want to be doing some focused studying that day. You didn't want to be doom scrolling on TikTok for five hours straight but it happens and don't beat yourself up too much about doing that. Just make sure you're balancing your academic and your test prep goals with more fun things, more relaxing things over the summer. So finally you have to figure out how to incorporate your weakest topics into your study time. It's really easy to just focus on your strong suits but if you do that that's gonna be a waste of the 50 hours since you already know that content. You should instead try to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. If you struggle with the circles category in math do 20 targeted problems just on that and make sure to get some type of feedback after each one to tell you where you're going wrong or right. Either watch some Khan Academy videos on the subject, read the answer explanations of the official tests, ask Aisley to explain why you got it wrong, or ask a friend or someone else who can help you in real life, or all of the above. The more perspectives you get, the better, because you never know what's really gonna click for you until you hear it. The most important thing is to be reviewing your mistakes in a very deep way where you don't make excuses for yourself. You can improve like 10 or 100 times faster if you identify these areas and work in a targeted way to improve them, not just practicing everything equally. That saves you time you could be spending enjoying your summer. So why wouldn't you do the slightly less comfortable targeted prep if it could save you hundreds of hours potentially? Within this study plan, be sure to take every single official College Board test that they've released on Blue Book in real conditions. There are six right now, but I'm sure they'll eventually release more. College Board themselves will always be the most accurate source on what future SATs will look like because they're the ones that write them. So not seeing the full range of practice questions that they've released can really hurt you on test day. This adds up to 12 hours plus whatever review time you need for the test. So that's a pretty significant chunk of the 50 hours. Eventually, you will start to see improvement if you stick with your plan. Be sure to reward yourself and let that improvement keep motivating you to continue. Or if it's been a while and you still don't see that improvement happening, stay positive and know that it will eventually happen. But also ask yourself, what could you be doing better? Are you spending enough time reviewing your mistakes? you understand what every problem on the test is asking of you. If not, what are some of the biggest categories you can work on? Are you running out of time? I know that's a big one for a lot of people, and I would really struggle with that on the reading section too. It might help to familiarize yourself with the different types of questions that are asked on both the sections, so you can more easily identify them and know how you're supposed to be solving them. Always be striving for the fastest, most efficient way of improvement that you can, and then adjust course if something is going wrong. And if you do that, I guarantee you will eventually get to your goal score. I believe in you. So those are most of the tips I have for making a summer plan for studying for your SAT. This also works as a general plan for basically any SAT date. The most important thing to do is to take care of yourself, make sure you don't burn out, and the second most important thing is to hold yourself accountable, both in your study schedule and when reviewing mistakes and deciding what you're going to be focusing your time on. That is a very fine balance. And it's not an easy feat, but I know you can do it. Just remember that your mental health always comes first. It will be okay no matter what score you get in the end. And you've got this. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out that link in the description below if you'd like an expedited version of making your study plan and infinite help on any question you'll have. And I'll see you soon.